Hi, this is Al of Resurrections and Adam Warlock and Thanos Podcast and proud member of the collective, and you're listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight Podcast. Yes, welcome back, loony listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 176, and you are with your high priest of Conchu, Ray. G'day, g'day. And with me tonight for you, we have a, a very special first time on the show, apart from some audio feedback. Uh, so I'd like to welcome, before we do anything, um, Jack Russell Moran. Russell, how are you going? Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> how, how, I like how, a bit of a uh, werewolf by night now. Yeah, well, I thought I, I thought I'd better dub you a nickname. You know, you're on the show yeah. now, so you deserve one. And, and I couldn't go past the Russell part of your name. So, uh, <laughs> how how about we call you I, Jack? <laughs> I dig. I dig. It. <laughs> anyway, a big welcome, Russell, uh, onto the show, uh, Loonies. We. If you, again, look up into the night sky, it is a last quarter moon, and they're kind of far and few between, but we have an over-the-moon segment, so for those of you that, that have listened before, you'd know that it is an ARC review, and we'll be looking at God and Country from 2008. Uh, this should be pretty damn good. Uh, Russell, I, I must admit that this was uh, something that we discussed and uh, you ultimately chose. Yes, Um well, uh, Black Spectre is, I won't get in too much into it right now, because I know we're going to dive into this later, but mm-hmm. he, to me, is the be-all, end-all of Moon Knight villains, even though he's he's pretty scarcely used. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's such a cool thing that, you know, there are loonies that, like yourself, Russell, that enjoy Black Spectre. He certainly is a great, a great villain, uh, and criminally underused but uh, it's it will get into this story there are also other references i guess where he has popped up before it's all very exciting uh, before any of that of course as well i just want to shout out of course our gracious patronies similar to russell a big thank you to you guys uh, for throwing some coin our way thank you so much russell uh and um yeah and you two can become a Patrini yourself, if you, uh, uh, I'll give you more details towards the end of the show. Also, a couple of sponsors, Hello Headphones, empowering gamers to play at their best. A big thank you to them. And also a big thank you to uh, Dreamland Comics from Illinois, the superhero superstore. So, um, so Russell, before we dive into this ARC review, which is, is oh, it is a cracker again. I, I always say that with all the Moon Knight <laughs> runs, so, um, but this in particular as well. I uh, just want to get a feel for um, an introduction to yourself and to the loonies that may not know you in and around the traps in our, in our community. Um, I could well have you on a, an Isla Ra. I'd love to have you on an Isla Ra sessions, but uh, as for like a a short, sharp synopsis or summary of you. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, hobbies that you like to do, titles that you like to collect, stuff like that. Um, well, I'm just a small town, uh, small town boy from Kentucky. I know that has a lot of negative connotations, but I'm actually quite intelligent. No. Um, uh, <laughs> Does it? I don't, yeah, I don't, you're speaking to Aussie. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it must be uh, the US kind of thing, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, yeah. a u.s thing although you know they've kind of they've kind of laxed on that a little bit well anyway um yeah i uh i like to do a lot of writing i do mostly fiction although ray knows that i do mm-hmm. uh non-fiction reviews as well mm-hmm. um hobbies well obviously i collect comics uh <laughs> i've got uh probably i mean I recently moved, uh, so uh, I sold a lot of my collection oh, to wow. help fi- finance the move. Mm-hmm. But I, I kept what uh, was near and dear to my heart, which, uh, of course, Moon Knight is at the top of that list. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I I proudly own every uh, how do I put it? Every Moon Knight title where his the title is his name. Mm-hmm. Um, Fantastic. I yeah, I haven't like collected all of the uh, you know guest appearances and stuff like that, but <sighs> all all of his uh, all of his main titles I have. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a massive undertaking trying to collect all the cameos and guest appearances. So to have all the um, the the title series is, is is a pretty it's no mean feat as well. I mean, so you're talking about all sixty issues of Mark Spector Moon Knight, all um, I always get this wrong. Is it thirty four, thirty eight issues of the Doug Mensch uh, run? Uh, I think it's thirty eight. Thirty eight. Yeah, yeah. Don't quote me on that, but <laughs> hey, I've got them all. Uh, but yeah, it's been a while since I pulled them out and and see uh, see how many issues are. I know there's sixty for Mark Spector Moon Knight. Then you got. Um, is it thirty-eight as well for Volume Five? What we're doing? Oh, I'm, am I totally wrong? Is that because oh, it's twenty? Is the um, is the Jack Russell one? I know mm-hmm. that. And then it goes way yeah. beyond that. So I think it's uh, anyway. Um, anyway, yeah, you've got you, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's close. It's it might be thirty-eight for that too. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a that's a quinky dink. But uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, needless to say, you've got a lot. Uh, you've got a lot. Um, I want to actually know, actually, Russell. The ones that you did kind of sell. So what titles were we talking about there? Um, we'll see. I had the problem of uh, I just pretty much collected whatever I thought was cool or mm-hmm. anything. Um, oh, what all did I sell? I sold all my... Uh, I had like a pretty good chunk of Swamp Thing books that I Ooh. sold. And nice. uh, um, some New God stuff. Uh, oh. uh, I even sold quite a bit of my uh, uh, Batman stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, because uh, I, I, like I said, I collected a lot of everything, but yes. I've, I've cut back down, and I only try to collect specific stuff now. Only the cream of the crop, Russell. I'm glad to hear that Moon Knight is on there, and the other guy didn't make the cut <laughs> <laughs> no no fair, to be fair of course he's yeah you know he's he's yeah. valid <laughs> anyway yeah, I, I assume you're referring to uh bruce wade that's it yes i'm trying to uh, yeah. we, we've used that one reference already russell uh which is good you've you've uh, generously used that so i'm trying to work my way around yeah old brucey old uh matches malone is it <laughs> is that his name as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah, or how about action figures, stuff like that? Do you, are you a gamer? Do you do you cat, uh, collect action figures? Um, oh, are you yes. a big film? I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually sitting in my uh, new toy room, which is a mess right now, but my my girlfriend that I moved in with was gracious enough to allow me to have my own room just for my toys. <sighs> Oh, so she's a keeper. That one, hold on to her. Yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I can uh, maybe I can post some pictures into the Facebook oh, yes. group. Later. Please do. Yeah. Um, I actually on my top shelf, I have like my three favorites that are all there. I've got uh, Moon Mooney, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, I only have three of his figures though, so it's kind of okay. <laughs> and then uh, DC Scarecrow. <laughs> And uh, and uh, Ray knows that I love the hobgoblin, so I yeah. have a, a little hobgoblin section there. So yeah, that's cool. I, I'm going to jump to that though, uh, Russell, as well, because yeah, you do. I I know that we've had a couple of conversations in and around hobby. Um, yeah, but I uh, just wanted to know, like your love for, as you mentioned at the beginning, Black Spectre. Where did that kind of come about? And also with Hobgoblin, how did that? Because he's a, I guess he's not an obscure villain. He actually has quite a, uh, uh, an arc in in the Spider Man canon. So he's quite you know well known and entrenched in that. But but what kind of drew you to, to both of those, Black Spectre and Hobgoblin? Well, I think on a, uh, the most primal pure basis is that they look cool right yeah yeah uh, um that that i feel like comics that's always the first if they look cool mm-hmm. you want to you want to read about them but that's why comics is such a great medium is because yes you they do look cool but they also gotta 
back it up in the story department. Um, yes. And I feel like they both do. Um, Black Spectre, when I actually started, you know, reading about him, I was like, well, this, this is a great character. And funny enough, not to get on too much of a tangent here, uh, Black Spectre was kind of very topical for what was going on when I uh, discovered him mm. for the first time. Uh, especially in terms of American politics. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, uh, as for Hobgoblin, I really first fell in love with him in the uh, Spider-Man, the animated series. Uh, He was voiced by Mark Hamill. Yes. So, um, but yeah, I feel like Hobgoblin is uh, the most underrated, underutilized uh, Spider-Man villain because a lot of people forget that throughout the 80s he was Spider-Man's like main villain. Mm. I mean Green Goblin was dead and uh, they had already kind of wrote in a way that Harry Osborn was the Green Goblin and Doc Ock wasn't active as much and um, Venom hadn't been created yet so um writer Roger Stern was like, well, I don't want to use the Green Goblin again, so why don't I mm. just make a new one, make a new <laughs> Goblin? And yeah. uh, created one of the best mystery stories, and I think a, a lot of longtime Spider-Man fans and readers will agree that Roger Stern's run is one of the seminal runs on Spider-Man. Oh, no, for sure. Uh, I mean, he's a great writer in his own right, whether it's uh, The Avengers or, or Amazing Spider-Man. Um, he's a, he's a great writer. Um, there is certainly a colourful history to behind the scenes of how Hobgoblin and the identities revealed and all that came about in the 80s as well. Uh, that, I found, was just as interesting as a character itself. There was, uh, there was so much kind of toing and froing uh, in there. I think, is it Tom DeFalco? Um, yeah. Had some ideas and... and uh, other people didn't, uh, and as to right. who Hobgoblin was, but it was very, yeah, very, very colourful. Um, yeah, 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 certainly. Yeah, but I think one thing. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, I was about to just quickly say, I think um, with a lot of good characters and villains, I guess they they never look outdated. So Black Spectre and Hobgoblin, you know, it's not like I'm trying to think of a. Um, it's not like Sue Storm's costume in the nineties, you know, oh, which yeah. is severely yeah. wrong. Um, the, these uh, costumes uh, stand the test of time, and, and especially Hobgoblin, even in his Demogoblin stuff, he even looked yeah. extra cool in that. I thought. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of all those designs, um, especially when. Well, I, I prefer the classic, like I call it, the clean cut. Uh, Roderick Kingsley Hobgoblin, the original mm-hmm. Hobgoblin. Mm. But I also absolutely love the way that uh, Todd McFarlane drew the Hobgoblin with the tattered cloak and the mm. demonic face right before he split into Demo Goblin, which is a whole other bag of worms there. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but the the one thing I I will say about both Hobgoblin and Black Spectre is that they both were uh, powerful, uh, rich. Well, not necessarily rich in uh, uh, monetary terms for Black Spectre, but rich in other ways. And they had inferior people take up their mantle later. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's certainly a, um, a kind of connecting thread with that for both of those. Um, what are your thoughts on potentially black? I mean, I know your thoughts probably on Hobgoblin and Spider-Man. If I was to ask you, would you like to see Hobgoblin in the movie? I'm sure you would. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so that's a given. But I, I just, I guess, your thoughts on Black Spectre uh, and the upcoming Moon Knight TV show as well. Um, do you realistically, I mean, setting aside that your love for the characters, well, do you, do you see him having a fit in the in the show potentially, or um, yeah, I I definitely feel like um, he'd be the he he's the perfect villain for the show. I, I feel like um, he's already such rich with character. I mean, you know, he's kind of a tragic villain. Oh, very and, much. So. Uh, yeah, 
the the MCU is pretty good at creating these tragic. I mean, you have Killmonger, even mm. even Thanos to a certain degree is kind yeah. of a tragic character. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. I, plus, with all that's going on in the world, I feel like he would create a nice. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Topical and. Mm-hmm. As long, as long as he looks cool, that's the other big thing. As long as he looks as accurate as they can make him, um, I'll be happy. But I do agree that the show should probably start with uh, with uh, Bushman because mm-hmm. he's just integral to Moon Knight's uh, origin. Yeah, I I agree. I think, uh, for sure, first on, on the Bushman take that you're saying, but also on Black Spectre. I mean, certainly from what, you know, we've read in God and Country, which is our upcoming review. Uh, he would be he would work really well, I think, in it. And uh, and there certainly was a Killmonger esque kind of tinge to it when I was reading it, uh, rereading it. Sorry, just like in the fact that you do kind of understand absolutely where he's coming from, and you see how he can turn into what he into what he has but also at the same time you kind of wonder geez he's pretty brutal <laughs> he's you know he's got no compunction to to, um, oh, yeah. to kill someone so uh, so he has got those those two sides which uh, as a as a reader you can't i mean you can't quite justify but you kind of like oh, totally understand where you're coming from um, right yeah yeah anyway we'll get into that listeners uh sorry russell did you have anything Oh, I just wanted to add that, like you can, you can not really justify, but you can, you can, uh, you can see where Black Spectre stands, other like than a uh, a Bushman who has like no redeemable yes. qualities. He's, oh, yeah. He's a uh, he's a bad bad man. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like I mean, not totally, but it's kind of like you looking at like, Venom and Carnage. Like you can't age, you know. There's no redeeming. You, you can't even empathise with him because what he does is just all kind of psychotic. But with Eddie Brock, right. there's a level of some method to his madness, so to speak. And there's a right. code, code of honour that he has. Um, not to say that Black Spectre has a code of honour, but you can at least see what has kind of browbeaten him t- to the point where right. he's it's like like falling down. You know that movie? Did you watch that? I have not seen that, no. Oh, really good with Michael Douglas. And he's just a normal guy, but all these events kind of um, beat him psychologically to the point that he snaps, and, and, and that's kind oh. of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check that one out. Um, yeah. It's, it's I, will a good, say, yeah. I will say about Venom, uh, well, he's not even a villain anymore, is he? He's No, uh, no. He's, but I, I will... Uh, just a real quick comment. Uh, mm-hmm. Venom... I think Venom and Immortal Hulk are the two best books that Marvel has right now. Ooh, um, yeah, absolutely. The way Venom, they're finally they finally reaching the uh, pinnacle for Venom with this uh, King in Black uh, okay. event because this Null character is one of the coolest villains Marvel has created in a long, long time. Nice. I actually. I've cr- I've collected all of his appearances too. So, oh, oh wow, he's so, he, okay. He's he's already he's already like he's rising in the ranks. He's he's going to be up there with uh, Black Spectre <laughs> and and Hobgoblin. I think. Oh wow, uh, yeah, that's cool. And, and to be such a, a and that I guess this is a testament to show that you know it's not only the legacy characters um, can be successful. Like you know, this is a very new villain, and uh, if you're to take uh, Russell's you know, point of view, then this character is brilliant. I mean, uh, I know a bit about him. Uh, he does look very cool to me, uh, and I like the way that Donny Cates has spun the whole symbiote thing and um, and how it kind of connects together, and he's actually enriched yeah. that history. I think that's really cool. But, yeah, I mean, certainly, yeah, a lot of modern-day, a modern, lot of modern recent runs, um, yeah, they can create just yeah. as good characters as the old ones. Yeah, to me... Before this whole run started, I th- I was so tired of Venom. I was so mm. tired of symbiotes. Like I liked Carnage because he's the crazy one and he's yeah. cool. And but I was so tired of because I just feel like Venom has become. He's kind of in that same category as like Deadpool, mm. 
where it was like I don't dislike Deadpool, but no. the fact that like Deadpool is all anybody ever wants to talk about is like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. now, but now, like Donny Case has managed to uh, make Venom not only an interesting character again, but a really good like hero. He's not even just an anti-hero anymore. Mm. He's like done some very heroic things. Yep, and and he's but, made him uh, a really complex character as well. Because yes, um, yeah. I, I agree with you, Russell. I think, and you know, not wanting to. Um, get on the wrong side of a lot of Venom fans as well, because I, I do love Venom as well, but I felt that a lot of the recent runs were, like, treading water, as in, like, not really knowing what else to do with Venom other than the whole symbiote thing, you know, Venomverse, all that sort of stuff. But I feel right. that Donny Cates had given him a direction with this new series with with uh, Ryan Stegman, and uh, he really dove deep into you know, the psyche of Eddie Brock and, and really starting to kind of flesh out his character and then expanding his whole canon with, with Null, um, you know. So uh, I, I think it certainly has um, a, a very strong kind of title. Um, funds have kind of prevented me from continuing, but I did collect, um, I collected from issue one till, I don't know, only till about 15 or 16. But um, yeah. it, it is a really good run. Uh, and Immortal Hulk, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, that is... That will be an immortal title, really. It'll be a classic. Um, I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to be so sad when that ends because mm. apparently it's ending at issue 50. 50, uh, yeah. yeah. And we're at, I think, 40 now, so that's 10 mm. more. I know. It's a good thing, though, that Al Ewing, I guess he's got... He's obviously mapped it out already, so... I think we're going to get a good ending to it, you know, rather than... Because, you know, sometimes these writers and Marvel... I guess they keep on writing, not knowing whether the the title will continue or not. Um, right. But, but I guess like by drawing a line in the sand and saying, "Look, you know, we're going to do it fifty, then I'm I'm very confident that Al Ewing will stick the landing at the end, and we'll get a nice rounded. Yeah, that that's perfect. Like a really mega sized omnibus if it if it comes out yep. as one. Yep. Uh, that'll be a perfect kind of chapter in the Hulk's life. But yeah, totally agree um, with Immortal Hulk. That's one of the like only books where like every issue i'm like wow i can't wait for the mm. next one yeah yeah like, it is good it, uh, and bennett's it, art is phenomenal oh god it's so scary it's <laughs> like, it, it is it's not what it's, you expect from hulk but it's like it's like john carpenter's the thing yeah. mixed with with alan moore's swamp thing mixed with the classic hulk yeah. all in because one the one thing that I love about that run is that even though it's a horror book now and it's creepy and there's it still feels like a Hulk book. Yes. Uh, now yep. I don't know if I've said this before, but Spider Man, the Hulk, and Moon Knight are my three top uh, oh. Marvel heroes. Nice. With uh, Doctor Do- Doctor Strange, Daredevil, and Thor kind of being the second tier. But, uh, yeah, awesome. Hulk Hulk is uh, very near and dear to my heart. So yeah. I was really happy that they, because uh, he was just kind of floating around. He was kind of like Venom. He was floating around mm. doing nothing. Well, or... after that after that great Peter David run, um, I, yeah. I love that. That was the introduction to a lot of the Hulk comics for me, and, and it was a brilliant run. Um but yeah, he kind of floated around, didn't know what to... I mean, we obviously got Planet Hulk, World War Hulk, which were big, big things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this again, yeah, is, is a defining, character-defining run by Al Ewing. Um, yes. Really, really good indeed. Uh, yeah, and, and agree. I mean, for me as well, Daredevil, as you mentioned, um, he's up there for me. I think the Chip Zdarsky run's pretty pretty damn good. Um, I really me... love the Charles Soule run of Daredevil. Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he uh, went I, he went all out, didn't he? Like towards the end, it went a little crazy, uh, which I think was great. Um, he created know. a great villain uh, that uh, Muse. I thought Muse was a great yeah. villain. Yeah, um, I hope they um, pop up and he and he had the little sidekick there with Blind Spot. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that that was a good run too. Uh, let's hope that we get a good Moon Knight uh, run. Touchwood, I'm sure it's around the corner anyway. Um, yeah. 
And uh, anyway, before we get into, I mean, there's very little to no news in our White North segment. Just the last thing I wanted to ask you, Russell, as well, just with your writing, um, any anything that you've been been uh, plonking down on on paper lately or typing? Uh, not too long ago, I wrote a uh, pretty early draft for a uh, comic book. Um, nice. I don't want to say too much because, like, I already have no hopes for it. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but I'm in like small negotiations with uh, with a toy company to oh. produce pr- produce the comic for the toys. They're not. I'm not saying they're a Hasbro or a Mattel, but they're mm. they're a, they're a company and uh, McFarlane w- Toys. <laughs> <laughs> but other than other than that i've been writing like I've, i'm currently writing a short story um nice. i i tend to i tend to write horror um right. my my dream though is to be a comic book writer but uh yeah, as we know that's not the easiest thing to uh <laughs> to no. accomplish no it isn't but i mean i guess as long as you keep on writing and you love what you're doing um I think that's that's a great thing. It it is it would be hard. I'm imagining, but there's nothing to stop you from from publishing your comics as well. Um, so right. the likes of Kickstarter, uh, you know, uh, give you that opportunity, that window to to potentially and and Russell as well. If you if you have anything that you want to like, you know, plug in the community, like for by all means, please do so. I I love to share and, and love to support. Um, you know, independent creations. Um, so it, you know, obviously it doesn't have to be Moon Knight. Um, um, right. And uh, yeah, yeah, just to share it around with other loonies because I think they all love it. You know, they all love it as well. So um, I think I think the thing that I was most proud of writing, I, I believe you read it, was my uh, sniper poem mm, that yes. that I wrote. That was uh, it's been like almost a year or so now. Yes, but uh, did we? Yeah, post- I was quite proud of that. Was that posted up? We should post it up or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'll, I'll, um, I'll add it to the show notes here as well. Uh, you know, with your, with your permission, Russell, I'll, um, I can post it up as a document or something on, on our group, and, uh, and there'll be a link in the show notes uh, for people to check it out. Because, uh, yeah, Russell, you, you, uh, you write a mean, a mean bit of pen, <laughs> if I can say that, <laughs> if I can make up a, a metaphor or something. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, for sure, it'd be my biggest compliment from that uh, story is that I, I I let a coworker read it and she cried. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's brilliant. You usually don't want to, you don't want to have some you want, usually don't want to make somebody cry, but when you're writing <laughs> it. It's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, well, that's special. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it brings out the emotions. So, uh, yep. Yeah, so go check it out, Loonies. It will be in the show notes. I promise you. Um, give it a read. It, it's really good. Um, yes. So anyway, Russell, uh, let's uh, let's get towards our over the moon segment now. There's only a bit of white noise, and there's absolutely nothing in that. So I had a bit of a troll. Unless, of course, Russell, you you come across anything? I'm not. I'm not sure. About um, Moon Knight or no? Yeah, I mean I haven't. Um, the only thing, the other reminder. I mean, we are in December, so the only reminder I will give Loonies out there is that the uh, the omnibus uh, is still there. I think pre-orders are available uh, for the Moon Knight omnibus uh, out in. I think it's early to mid January. Uh, go check it out or order it from your LCS. Uh, it probably has everything. Look, if you're a big Moon Knight fan, it probably has everything that you've already got. Uh, it's most of, if not all, the uh, I think the the Doug Mensch run, uh, plus you know a couple of the uh, the pre solo title uh, appearances in I believe the Hulk magazine stuff like that. Um, now, uh, does that? I, I, I this is news to me actually. Does nope. that actually? Does that include? Uh, oh. Um, a resurrection war? Uh, oh no, or, I don't. No, I don't think it does. I think we're talking. Sorry, Mench wrote that too. I think. Yes, right? he he did. Okay. Yeah, I think it's more chronological from memory. So I think I think if anything, there's a lot of there might be. I think there's werewolf by night stuff in there, Hulk oh, magazine yeah. stuff. Um, it may. Oh, don't quote me. It may not have the whole Mench no 38 run but uh there's a good there's a good slab of it there uh so i think it's it's in and around the 80s still um so yeah not right. further down 
But um, yeah, yeah. Mitch really, Mitch really, uh, <laughs> he really dug him out of that hole after the Mark Spector run. So <laughs> <laughs> you did as well. I know that Mark Spector run. It's a special run. I, I enjoy it um, for what it is. It, it's a, a, a yeah. We we had Moon Knight fight Hobgoblin in it, so I can't yes. And actually, um, did you did you you probably did read the Web of Spider Man? There was another um, Moon Knight appearance there with Hobgoblin, like he yes. fights it. Yeah, that was a cool one as well. I read that only recently. Um, yeah, I yeah. enjoyed that quite a bit, and that's like I said, I prefer the original Hobgoblin, mm. but um, the Mackendale version was the one that uh, Moon Knight always fought, and I always thought he was well written. Yes, um, he was deadly. Like I yes. loved how they showed off how skilled he was. You know, he wasn't just like a two-bit thug in a costume. Right. He was. Uh, right. He took yeah. He took on these mercs himself. He beat them all. He beat the people in the bar. Um, so he was he was formidable. Yeah. The the. I mean, what sets? I don't want to get off on this tangent again because I know we're trying to get going. <laughs> but 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 the Kingsley uh, version actually had the Goblin Serum, and he actually. He perfected it to where he was even stronger than the Green Goblin. Mm. Uh, that's that's a detail a lot of people don't remember. Okay, but uh, but Mackendale he didn't have that, so that's why he eventually <laughs> sold his soul. Yes, to, to a demon. So, uh, but as yeah, 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 yeah. As you do. I mean, he had a lot of skeletons in his closet. That guy. Um, oh. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of jack-o'-lanterns you might say yeah a lot, a lot of pumpkins a lot of pumpkins in the patch uh, <laughs> uh yeah for sure well uh russell how about we um why don't we just like just throw to a, a quick break to get ourselves ready for this review and and listeners okay. when we yeah and uh and when we come back loonies we'll have a look at our over the moon arc review which will be god and country in the moon night so catch you soon i am connor from the house of l and i am ray from the house of zod we are two of the many many survivors of krypton's destruction and we have made our home in australia and dare i say have become australians for better or worse But we have also decided to read Superman comics, uh, read Superman books, watch Superman shows, cartoons, movies, basically everything Superman, and from an Australian perspective as well. Whether you're a seasoned fan, like me, or whether you are coming in fresh, wide-eyed, and wanting to learn more like me, then this podcast is for you. Join us for our bi-weekly adventures available on all good podcast catches. So just search for Last Sons of Krypton a Superman podcast will be coming to you from Australia or some cosmic dimension, wherever we are, that week. Up, 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 up and, and away. away! Yes, welcome back, loony listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 176. I am joined by a very special guest, first time, Jack Russell Moran, and uh, (laughs) valued Petroni, and we are here to do our Over the Moon arc review. Now, so for listeners that aren't um, privy to what we usually do for our reviews, what we'll do is just, uh, I'll ask... I kindly ask Russell to uh, speak out the the credits to run out the what am I saying to to, to give the rundown of the credits um, right. for for this arc uh, as well as where you can find it if you want to read it if you haven't read it yet uh, then uh, Russell will give us a bare bones which is a synopsis of the arc itself so this covers. Um, a lot of the issues, 14 to 19, uh, and uh, we'll give a summary. So just in case you need a bit of a a bit of a reminder as to what all these six issues are about, uh, Russell will read that. And then we'll kind of go just free form into uh, just our discussion of it. So it could range anything from writing to art, themes, characterizations, any references to other runs as well. And then we'll cap that off with a moon rating system. Now, Russell, 
you do have the privilege of choosing. We have two systems here. We have the vanilla rating, the moon rating system based on the phases of the moon, or we do have the Connoisseur's rating system. Which system would you like to rate your arc tonight? Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Connor shoe rating system. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> it somehow attracts a lot of people uh, with his colourful and descriptive language. So there you go. So uh, Russell will will use the Connor shoes rating system. Okay, I'll go for um, I'll go for the vanilla one then, just to give us a bit of a rounded um, way about okay. it. So, uh, without any, I guess, further ado, Russell, if you'd like to give the credits for what we are about to review. All right. Uh, God and Country, Moon Knight, Volume 5, issues number 14 through 19, released March through August 2008. Written by Mike Benson. You got Mark Texera on pencils. Uh, Also on ink, uh, Dan Brown is your colorist. Letterer is Joe Caramagna, mm-hmm. and editor is Axel Alonso. And I actually, I have a question about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, some websites list that uh, Charlie Houston still had a part in the plot on this arc. He certainly um, did. Yes, he does. It's got it in my credits in the book as well. I think so. He and Benson, I think they plotted it out, but Benson actually wrote the script. Yeah. Yeah, because it still has that Houston vibe. Oh, but... Very, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yes, and availability. Um, well, um, these uh, I found that these issues are getting harder and harder to get in floppy form. Um, mm. I, I I got mine. A couple years ago now, but they are going up in price. Uh, mm. it must be the the Moon Knight fever we've <laughs> we've got. Um, I know it is on Comicsology, the whole thing, mm-hmm. um, both in uh, collected form and single individuals. I, I can't speak on Marvel Unlimited because I don't have it. Oh yeah, um, oh, yeah, certainly is on there. I've uh, had a little geese, and uh, I don't know how easy it is to get the trade i know that one of my local comic shops has like five copies of it that's the only moon knight thing they have so uh but uh well that's very i think they're very hard to get especially the hard covers as well yeah i mean i'm I'm talking from australia i mean uh so it actually surprises me that you're saying as well just in the u.s that the floppies are hard to get because i would have thought that you guys um would be kind of easy. No, I don't know. I'm just thinking bargain bins and all that because we don't have that over here. But um, right. yeah, yeah, it, it just certainly does seem to be. I think the Houston run slash the Benson run is quite popular. Um, so yeah, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I feel like this is just as good as the bottom, and I know that might be mm. blasphemy, but uh... <laughs> oh, we'll get into it. It is not by no yeah. means uh, blasphemy, I reckon, because it's a real good, a real good arc. Um, okay, well, uh, Russell, I'm going to cue in the music as well, but would you, would you like to, uh, to give us the bare bones? Moon Knight continues his crusade against crime, wreaking vengeance on criminals with brutal force. His extreme actions gain the attention of Tony Stark and S.H.I.E.L.D. as public perceptions of superheroes are already tenuous at best. Moon Knight also works with the Profiler to pinpoint particular targets, and it is through this that he zeroes in on Simon Maddox, a.k.a. Killer Shrike. Moon Knight's brutal brand of justice gains the ire of Frenchie, but also piques the interest interest of one Carson Knowles. Knowles is finding it hard to adjust to society after serving a sentence and he's subjected to his own problems in the form of his parole officer. Knowles' mental instability pushes him to return as Black Spectre. Meanwhile, Mark is suffering from his own inner demons and his relationship with Marlene fares no better. She storms out and runs into Knowles, who has similarly lost his way. Knowles decides to frame Moon Knight for crimes, and Killer Shrike is soon murdered. 
left with a crescent moon carved on his head by Knowles. Iron Man soon catches up with Moon Knight, but he tells Tony he's being framed. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Knowles, the Black Spectre, picks up some nanotech in his plan to control the city. Black Spectre attacks Moon Knight and leaves him for dead. Though he's pushed away many of his friends, Mark's close network like Ray and Crowley help him out to continue his fight and thirst for vengeance. Moon Knight catches up with Black Spectre, who is intent to release a controlling agent onto the populace, and in a deadly rooftop fight, Moon Knight desperately decides to push Black Spectre over the edge, killing him. Shield close in on Mark, wanting to bring him in, whilst Mark tells Kanchu, enough is enough. Yes, thank you, Russell, there for uh, the synopsis. Uh, that was, uh, uh, thank you so much for making it sound a lot better than uh, <laughs> it was uh, what was written, because I just kind of pieced that together. But a huge thank you. And again, th- there's so much in this arc, I could not fit everything in it. Um, I can understand why the wiki, which is bloody six pages long, <laughs> I can wonder. I can understand why that's so long. But no, thank you. Um, thank you, Russell. That was, that was really cool. Thank um, you. Yeah, so I guess we're going to get into it again to cap to start us off, Russell. Um, overall impressions. So, what did you make of of this art god in country with your favorite villain, Black Spectre? Uh, I thought it was. I, I think it's one of the best Moon Knight stories of all time. Um, I think this ranks right up there with the bottom or um, from the dead or Lemire or Mensch. Uh, it's that good to me um mm. uh i i just i love i love how much is going on at the same time but it never feels like it's overcrowded yes um you have all this character development going on between you know you got mark you got frenchy uh you got um i'm actually blanking on uh, uh oh it's, it's rob Rob, Rob is, uh, yes, the 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 boyfriend, uh, the Frenchie. Yep. Yes, and then you have uh, obviously Marlene, Marlene and uh, Carson Knowles, and mm-hmm. you even got Tony Stark in here. So yeah. uh, and Ray and yeah. Crawley as well. I mean, there's so yeah. many. Everyone's in yeah. it. It's really cool. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'd agree as well. I think it is a very strong run. Um, I've never actually thought of it to compare it with with the other great. Uh, titles that we we have in Moon Knight, such as you know Houston Lemire, uh, the Warren Ellis run. I've never really thought to compare it, but it is very strong. I, I must say, I, I do enjoy Mike Benson's writing, and I I believe it's his collaboration with Houston that really does augment this arc because it stays true to uh, you, you know the first arcs, um, oh, the first you know the first half of this volume by Charlie Houston. So you get that consistency, um, but it's also got it's also got Mike Benson's own kind of you know twist to it, and uh, and Tixira's art I, I think really adds to that the tone of of yeah. the uh, the thing. I mean, you can have I mean, all artists are great, you know. But if you had um, I don't know an artist who had a really uh, inappropriate style, like if it was kind of a bit more lighter and and cartoony, then it wouldn't right. be as good yeah i mean we're dealing with like marvel knights here where where it is really grim and it's quite violent so yeah um it's it's not quite as gritty and dirty as uh finch's art mm. but i feel like it's it's really top notch i love how he draws moon knight it's me too it's so good oh. me, me too and it's so uh they must have gotten the memo or something because I think they knew how cool Moon Knight would look whenever he kind of dives out of the sky or something. So we get, you know, we get that kind of fan service of him, uh, particularly yeah. towards the beginning where he he jumps some some criminals. But uh, yeah. yeah, really, really good run. Well, let's um let's get into it then. I'll I'll let you um, kick us off then, Russell. Uh, any points? It could be what, what would the first point um, be for you? It could be anything from the writing, art, themes, characters. Um, well, I kind of touched on that I really enjoyed the uh, character development of the whole arc. Mm-hmm. Everyone 
in the story has something going on. Um, yes. You have Mark, who is kind of, and I, I don't know if this was intentional, being how he's, you know, got these multiple personalities, but he's kind of torn three ways. Um, he's got his, uh, you know, his duties as Moon Knight and Khonshu kind of pulling the strings there, always mm-hmm. in his head. You have... Um, him wanting to be with Marlene, but Marlene not wanting to be with with him. I mean, she does, but she doesn't. Mm-hmm. And then uh, his ongoing uh, kind of uh, falling out with uh, Frenchie. So, mm-hmm. yeah, which we it, it, sorry, it, even to take it one step further. I mean, he's also got this. Uh, this over looming uh, fear of uh, shield and uh, yeah. the, the initiative. So, yeah, which is certainly a sign of the times as well. Cause we're talking about the registration act. Uh, we, right. we know only the issue before issue 13 was Moon Knight getting his registration card approved. Um, so we're very much right in the middle of, of those events, but yeah, exactly that, that character development um, you, you get, it's a step further from, from say the bottom where, where Mark has ostracized everyone, and you can see him still doing it here. Uh, look, I, I think he's got the, the, the strangest relationship with Marlene as any couple in the Marvel Universe. Um, it, it's, <laughs> he does. It, it's so dark, and like, there's even a bit here, uh, I can't remember which issue, but uh, we see the typical Marlene in bed again. You know, you know it's almost, almost like a play on that. But she calls yeah. it out. She says, look, you know, it can't just be about this, about sex. You know, our relationship's got to be more than that. Um, at the same time, Mark Spector's like going in, in some other instance, oh, I wish we were kind of like a normal couple. And, and right. it's so kind of sad to, to think that they can never be. I mean, and, and they can never be a normal couple. I mean, uh, and Marlene knows this because he's got so much baggage. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. So, he, so he ends up, you know, um, taking it out on her and, and she, you know, um, pushing her away. So he really is a, a self-destructive character by that nature. Right. But, I mean, you you got to really love somebody to try to even consider taking them back after they wore your enemy's face. Oh, um, <laughs> can, can I say that would have to be uh, the image of this whole arc, that the most horrifying, horrifying, maybe even for the whole volume. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Russell. Uh, there's that mark, beautifully drawn Mark Texera art of Moon Knight, a Mark all of a sudden wanting to try on Bushman's face and he does it in the mirror and Marlene walks in the most inappropriate time. Oh my God, <laughs> that was that was one of the most memorable moments, I think, in Moon Knight canon for sure. And another thing I love is that uh, uh, Khonshu is a little bit jealous of Marlene and uh, he is. kind of uh, taking the uh, attention away from him even so much as we get a... We get a nice West Coast Avengers reference where Khonshu turns into <laughs> yes. Tiger. So. Yes. I forgot about that, but you're right. There's a big splash, like a half a page splash page on her. I, I, I remember I was reading it on the bus, and then I turned up to that page, and I was just like, I'm hoping no one's uh, kind of looking over my shoulder because there's this, like, you know, mutilated face, yeah. and then this yeah. Tiger woman in a bikini. Um, yes. <laughs> yep. And I love Mark. I don't. I the Mark's uh, reaction, how they drew him right after that, is priceless because he's just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You call me out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's there's plenty to love about the art. I, I'm look. I want to whilst we're on it anyway, just stick on the art because um, as we mentioned, it sounds like both of us really did enjoy the art. I I associate it with the '90s. Uh, look, I was a big again '90s Ghost Rider fan, which. Um, Texera and Howard Mackey, they just did a brilliant run. Uh, and so it has that really dark edge to it, it's, you know, for, for Ghost Rider, very supernatural. Yes, it's it's really realistic, but it has like a tinge of like, uh, I don't know how to quite, almost cell shading a little bit. Um, right. Some The close-ups on the faces and stuff are really realistic, but when you see, like, Moon Knight in action, he looks very um, animated in some ways. Yes. Um, 
and I think he really pops off the page um, just beautifully. Like he does. He's got the um, and and some people don't like it. I mean, he's got that kind of Finch esque, you know, anatomy, like you know, hyper muscled, you know. But yeah, he, yeah. But he's not like a. He's not shown as like a Schwarzenegger. I mean, he's a little toned down from your 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 David Finch. Uh, Black yes. Spectre is 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 oh. brutal. <laughs> as you say. Oh, man. How cool is that? that- that big reveal. I mean, they tease you for like two books in advance, and yep. then they've the big reveal when he's in full costume again is just it's chef's kiss. Why? It's just <laughs> great. Have you have you seen any cosplays like in Black Spectre? I reckon that would be awesome. I have, I have never seen a Black Spectre cosplay. I don't uh. think so. I've seen some really cool custom action figures that I'd love to have. Ooh. Come on, Hasbro, Hasbro make a black. Uh, I would love a Legends. I'd get that in a heartbeat for sure. Far out. I, I, I guarantee. I guarantee you. When the when the Disney Plus show, we'll get an entire Moon Knight themed wave. Yes. I hope so. But I, I I would imagine that at least half of them will be based off the show and not the comic because oh, that's okay. usually how they. It's usually how their marketing goes is and half it, comic and half live action. So. Yeah, and they'll probably like you know for the wave the sixth wave you know toy will probably be something totally random. So you're kind of obliged to get it anyway. It's probably going to be like some cosmic uh, you know it's going to be I don't know Gamora or something. <laughs> Just like <laughs> what? I don't want. I don't need yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> no, knowing them, knowing them, they'll throw in Tigra. Uh, yeah, no. I'd, if they would, I'd get, I'd get Tigra. I wouldn't yeah. worry about that. Um, and if the the, the bath, thing... sorry, go, no, go ahead. Oh no, I was about to say, if the the builder figure was Moon Knight related, then yeah, that that was still the deal for me. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. I was actually about to bring that up. I feel like the only builder figure I could think of would be Conchu. It would yes. have to be Conchu. Um, yes. Bird skull whether... Conchu. Yeah. Yeah, whether it's the bird skull or the classic statue, um, mm. yeah, that would but be awesome. I mean, if it's going to be an actual figure, I would imagine it would be the bird faced. Uh, yes. Uh, well, yeah. I hope so because we haven't seen that before. But yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I interrupted yeah. you. Then you were about to say something. Oh no, I was literally just about to bring up the the builder figure. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Yeah. We had the same thought. Excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I guess, you know, talking about your, you're saying that the character development of Mark as well, let, let's kind of get into a bit more of that. Um, uh, I One of the, the very strong things I think as well, and this ties in, I guess, with with the writers doing their homework and referencing other runs. So we see Frenchie really angry at Mark because, of, uh, apart from all these other things that he just hates him for, um, but uh, because he, he went after Killer Shrike, Simon Maddox. Um, and we know Simon Maddox, um, Killer Shrike, from the Mark Spector Moon Knight run. So a great little nod to that run. Uh, issue, mm-hmm. oh, I can't get it right, 34, I think. I always get that wrong. But it's when Frenchie takes on Killer Shrike. Uh, himself, so there's there's a kind of rivalry that they have. So I guess Frenchie's really angry to Mark that he actually took it upon himself to um, to take on Killer Shrike. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Frenchie. Uh, I really feel for Frenchie. Um, mm. He uh, he's he's been on the bad end of this relationship. I even in my notes, if I can find it, have a quote for him from him from the book that i uh, really loved give me just a second i'll find it um wow uh something it's something along the lines of uh man that's okay it's um now now i feel like a bit of a (laughs) uh something it, it basically boils down to every every time uh you walk into my life, I'm met with nothing but misery or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it, it really hit me in the gut because Mark is not trying to hurt Frenchie, but he always does. Mm. So, yeah. It's just one of those unfortunate relationships. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't do it out of spite or in, intention or anything like that, but uh, his way of life kind of 
it just really does not work for Frenchie, and Frenchie knows this. I mean, even again in issue 13, uh, the issue before this whole arc starts, there's that, that interaction with Rob, and um, and he and he has a, an argument with Rob, and it's like, well, no, no, you, you don't know Mark at all, you know. And, and if you think it's um, uh, anything to do with like love for Mark, no, no, it's not, it's not that at all. So it's a very complicated relationship that they have. Um, but yeah, Frenchie's certainly uh, the worst off from it. Um, right. So yeah. I, f- I feel like this is a like, okay, you know, the classic Spider-Man scenario where he's always trying to juggle uh, being Spider-Man, his mm-hmm. job, Mary Jane, Aunt May. This is a more darker, maybe even realistic version of how that would work out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause yes. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, you always know in the end of the day, usually Aunt May is going to be fine and Mary mm. Jane is going to be fine and he's going to get the pictures to Jay Jonah while also knocking out Electro. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, but uh, <laughs> Mark Mark doesn't get as lucky with that. So No, and, um, and MJ would have to be the most tolerant person ever. Uh, to put up with Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, Marlene yeah. is a realistic, as you say, version. Uh, she puts up, she can't put up with it the whole time because it's just, yeah, it's draining for them. Um, you know, yes. and, and, and even Frenchie's worried. Uh, I, oh, it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's jealousy, but there's that, I love that interaction with Rob and Frenchie and Mark. So Rob is training Mark or like kind of rehabilitating him because he's still, he's still not a hundred percent. He's, he's got like braces on his knees. He's taking yeah. drugs, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so he's doing a bit of rehab with Rob, but um, Frenchie's not happy with it because I don't think it's jealousy. I think he just doesn't want Rob have anything to do with Mark because he knows Mark right. is, is like a poison, unfortunately, you know, whether he, he you know, likes it or not. So they, they, there's a lot of friction um, generated between Rob and Frenchie as well. And I love how Rob is is uh, used a lot more in this series, um, uh, uh, you yeah. know, as, a, as a, a springboard to Frenchie. It actually, it actually um, furthers the character of Frenchie, you know, by him yeah. having his partner there. Yes, I I'm a big fan of the Frenchie and Rob relationship. Mm. Um, I've I love that even all the way back in 2008 there was this kind of representation. Yes, um, and it's real. It's realistic. It's not shoehorned in. Mm-hmm. It's um, I like it a lot. I wish we would have seen more from Frenchie and Rob uh, throughout the other series, but. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't think we really do. Well, we don't get many of the support casts, unfortunately, in a lot of the the, the later runs, um, which is a shame. Um, and, and is one of the strengths I think of this run is that that Benson and Houston use the support cast really well. Like, right. You know. Well, Marla, I, I, yeah. uh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. sorry. I, no, I sorry. Like keep, I, no, no, no. I feel sorry. Like I keep uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I always use the, you know, the the cliche that we all hate is that Moon Knight is Marvel's. <laughs> um, yes, and that's that's. I mean, on a very bare minimum level, that's accurate. But as we all know, it's not. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> I, I always draw more of a comparison in a lot of ways between Moon Knight and The Shadow. Okay. Um, the Shadow, of course, was an old pulp character, an old radio character that actually inspired oddly enough. Mm-hmm. But uh, he had a whole network of uh, people that kind of worked for him. Um, basically, any time the Shadow would rescue somebody, they would be indebted to him. Mm-hmm. And he had like there was a huge cast of characters that the Shadow could use from. Oh, cool. So that's what I feel like with Moon Knight is it's very similar and they each had their own purpose. Like Moon Knight had, or I'm sorry, the shadow had his, had his taxi driver named Mo and <laughs> he had his intelligence uh, guy. And it's, it's kind of like that with Moon Knight too. I mean, he's got his Frenchies, like his weapons guy and, uh, you yeah. know, Marlene, Marlene, he uses for uh, Intel a lot. And yes. 
So yeah, it's I always draw that comparison. I I don't think a lot of people would, but <laughs> that 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 is a good a good comparison actually because um yeah he as much of a lone wolf as Moon Knight is, um, I think what's very intrinsic to his character is is his support cast. Um, I mean you can't have Moon Knight without your Marlene and Frenchie. I know it sounds very obvious because you say you can you can liken that to like Spider Man and his support cast or whatever, but um I I believe so and and definitely in the stories that you see. He does lean on them heavily. It's like it's not like he's whether it's Frenchie flying the the moon copter, whether it's Crawley giving him that bit of information he needs. Uh, you know, he really needs them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And he he ends up being he ends up being his own sidekicks, uh, and sometimes because you know he's got Jake Lockley and he's yes. got uh, <laughs> yeah got old Stephen Grant so. Yeah, yeah. Which is great versatility for for writers, I guess. You can you can um, focus on one or you know use the other, uh, as well as giving Moon Knight himself a, a nice range of of how he kind of um, gets his intel and yeah you know, does his stuff. Sure. Want to talk about also? Uh, uh, so I mean, just just to kind of round out on the good guy sort of thing, um, we get we get Ray in there as well. He, there's a, a nice little bit of development there between him and Mark. I mean, Ray wanting more field action um, and, mm-hmm. and there be, being that interaction all culminating in uh, the Wyos that Moon Knight fights uh, and Ray swooping in, which is probably a good thing because I think Moon Knight was, uh, was in trouble there. Um, yeah. He's yeah, swooping in with the, the Gatling gun Killing a few people, <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, and Moon Knight. Well, it ends with him and the and the cops, but he manages to escape off panel. Um, so there's again a bit of tension there, like, um, but you can understand Mark's side of it because I guess he he doesn't want that responsibility, especially since uh, Ricky is deceased. Uh, he doesn't want Ray on his conscience, and he doesn't want, I guess, another Jeff Wild, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Ray uh Ray makes some valid points, but you know, at the end of the day um, uh it, it's not exactly the best move to randomly kill people. Although no. Mark Mark was in trouble there. But yeah, um uh, Ray brings up the fact that oh, it's oh, you can't murder them, but it's okay to mangle them and yeah. uh leave leave them broken, but uh yeah, it's it's a very fine line that Ray and uh, Mark walk there, and Ray decided to you know mm. take a little jump. Well, well, there's actually there's actually a really nice bit of writing as well here, Russell. I think Moon Knight um, kind of there's an inner monologue, uh, something along the lines of it actually takes a fine line and a lot of control not to kill people. It's like it's easier to kill them, but he kills them, he beats them to the point of, de- of death. But he said it, yeah. it actually takes a lot of skill to just like pull back on that last second. So, yeah. God, even even the thought of that makes Moon Knight sound like a, a an utterly kind of brutal hero. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, especially with the, the carving yeah. of the forehead, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah, I, I love that little tidbit. <laughs> mm. uh, um. I, I I've grown a little weary of like the overly psychotic Moon Knight, mm-hmm. um, because I do like uh, I I I kind of like the bread and butter of Minch, where yep. um, he he was he was a classical style hero that had some problems, uh, but I mean obviously Houston and uh, Vincent really took that to uh, eleven. So, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do. I re- I really enjoy how he's he he's obviously suffering mentally, um, mm. and he's suffering with. He's always got this Khonshu figure in the back of his head, and he needs like a release, and that's why he's always suiting up as Moon Knight. Um, but at the same time, we see him kind of at times considering not being Moon Knight, especially for Marlene. Mm. Um, so he's, he's, he's just one of the most complicated characters that he, I think in Marvel comics. So, yeah, he is. I think um, there's also, a, maybe it can be perceived as being a little 
too easy to lump in psychosis with with someone with a mental mental issues you know so if mark has did then it's like well he can also be psychotic you know which i i think is not necessarily the right thing or, or you know a good thing to to do but if right. you i guess lump it in with all the other ingredients like mark is an avatar of vengeance you know he has not only that but he's also got his his um his DID is extended to the fact that he actually hallucinates and sees Conchu and Conchu's like barking in his ear. If you kind of add all that up together, then it does kind of make sense that um, he he would be kind of like a, a boiling point at point, uh, you know, as Moon Knight, and yep. he would lash out and he would be kind of psychotic in that sense. But um, I mean, I agree with you as well. As much as I do love the the Houston and Benson run. Um, I don't think we should just be seeing as Moon Knight as as this psychotic, brutal hero. He's much more than that, and and definitely yeah. the Mensch run shows that. Yes, yeah. uh, and you, I we mental illness is a very real problem, mm. and uh, uh, more people suffer from it than I think a lot of people realize. I mean, between anxiety and depression, and yes. Um, so like, it's, it's kind of unfair. I mean, especially in today's world to just say, oh, that character is crazy or he's, you know, he's a psycho. I mean, like he's, he's suffering. Like, it's not like a character like the Joker where he has almost a made up mental problem (laughs) or he's like, he's, oh, he's actually super sane and (laughs) yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that one, uh, some crazy thing like that. Or, or I mean, or Carnage, who who is yeah. a sociopath and a psychopath. So, yes. you know, that's yeah. <laughs> that's his his thing. Um, yeah, but um, also, I guess if we stick with that as well, I mean, I wanted to just also just quickly address Crawley. I mean, so there was a little bit of an interaction there again we get with, um, and I like that scene where Crawley basically punches or slaps Mark. He tries to kind of get him out of his stupor. Um, so we, it's good that we do get a little bit of Crawley here. I would have liked to have seen a bit more, but um, hey, there, there's plenty. There's a cast of thousands in this arc. Uh, so yeah. that was a good interaction. Mark, again, wanting to get the drugs off him. Again, similar to the the bottom, the Houston run, um, but Crawley, um, yeah, trying to, trying to get him out of his funk. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm Crawley being the voice of reason. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know you've hit rock bottom when Crawley's the voice of reason. Yeah. Uh, I I love Crawley. He's probably my favorite of the supporting cast just because he's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's... He's always in like a, you know, either a drunken haze or a drug induced haze, but he still speaks so eloquently. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Hey, to me, like, he's kind of, he's kind of like the idiot savant or maybe even like the court jester. Uh, he's something that you yeah. don't take seriously, but he, he can come up with some profound stuff. Yes, for sure. Um, I always remember, um, I'm, I'm kind of hazy on all, all of it now, but Crawley, actually helped Moon Knight uh, when he was battling. I mean, he's helped him a lot throughout his career, but one mm-hmm. of his earliest was when he helped him fight uh, his brother, Randall Spector, when uh, oh, when yes. uh, Randall was, was the uh, hatchet man. Um, oh, that's right, yes. Yeah, that's yeah. early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, for that's sure. One of my favorite, that's one of my favorite early uh, oh. Moon Knight stories. The Hatchet Man, I Randall think... Spector, is scary. I, I reckon. I, yeah, I, I love him as a character. Yeah, I, I thought it was a bit unique that when they decided to color those those old <laughs> issues, they gave him green hair, green hair, and white yeah. face, and red. Li- I was like, are, are are you trying to say that he's the Joker? Uh, or yeah, just... <laughs> yeah. There was a an but... association there. <laughs> yeah, not for sure. Um, well, wanting to move to to one of the other big hitters here. Um, obviously, Black Spectre, and I know he's a big, um, a big villain for for you. Uh, he also came in with a, a lot of baggage as well. I mean, we see, as you mentioned in the synopsis, uh, he's, he's out of jail. Um, he's trying to make ends meet. There's this thing also with his son, um, which kind of gives you a bit more of a um, empathy for him. Uh, but we we kind of see his journey towards getting or returning to the Black Spectre. Yes, this. I mean, this arc 
is pretty much a love letter to issue number 25. Mm-hmm. Um, it hits a lot of the same story beats intentionally, not like they were copying, but intentionally. Yeah. Um, and ish, back in issue number 25, I mean, most of the book was from from Knowles' perspective, at least the beginning part was. And um, he, was a, he was a veteran that came back from war. And, mm-hmm. I mean, back then it was the Vietnam War, which a lot of soldiers came back and they were not they were not welcomed with open arms and um, he had lost everything. His, his father was like a failed um, uh, politician and his son had been taken away and then eventually Mm -hmm. was, was killed. Um, So, and he had like no money and he just decided (laughs) he saw Moon Knight in the paper and he was like, well, I'm going to be like him, but bad. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a, a bit of a hark back again. I'll, I'll put in notes here to references to other runs. I found, uh, I found a, a little comparison to, uh, to the copycat. Um, you know, him dressing up as Moon Knight and and trying yeah. to get Moon Knight in trouble to to Jeff Wild that we see earlier on around the trial of Mark Spector run, as well as well as the early um, Moon Mark Spector Moon Knight run. So again, Moon Knight's subjected to someone running around. <laughs> in his identity kind of um kind of uh giving him a bad name yeah for sure um which i mean it is a trope that is used um pretty frequently throughout superhero comics but like it's done really well here for sure mm. um yeah do, uh, do you... black Spec- go ahead Sorry. go ahead oh no i was about to say yeah do, do you um did you find any parallels between Black Spectre and Moon Knight during this this arc. Oh, for sure. Um, mm. I feel like um, I mean, they're both suffering. They're both trying in a lot of like. We know Black Spectre. He just wants to be loved. Yes. Um, he uh, in in his first appearance in twenty five, he was very much a political villain. Yeah. Um, he, he was uh he was taking over New York slowly but surely and nobody would listen to reason. It would seem like Mm. he was, uh, he was manipulating behind the scenes. And of course, Moon Knight took that all away from him. So now he's even more broken. He was already broken before. Now he's even more broken. Mm. And, um, he's, he like, so is Mark Spector. Um, Yeah. yeah, he uh he's been through a lot and he doesn't quite know how to deal with it and he his son is gone yeah he never like he obviously wanted marlene and marlene rejected him and that that was an interesting interaction as well because i wanted yeah to get your thoughts on that because it was it was strange that marlene that benson made marlene bump into him and and i guess that the, she was a connecting tissue between, you know, if you you are to compare Mark Spector and Carson Knowles, I guess she's, she was the, the common factor between the two. But, yeah, did you – so you got the sense that Carson was – yeah, he was actually into Marlene. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. She, she worked for him when he was uh, running for mayor, mm. um, and uh, she was on the outs with Mark – back then too of course they always seem to be on the house yeah. with each other but yeah yeah but uh um but yeah you could t- kind of tell that Minch back then was putting a little bit of a love triangle uh pen in the story but i think it's really exploited here yeah where uh <laughs> carson tries to definitely make it explicit I, i'm not stalking you this isn't weird. <laughs> yeah, I, that's just, right. I just happen to be here yeah 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 true but uh yeah yeah um, uh, it's it's kind of a dis dislocated uh love triangle it's like they they're all three involved but they're like involved in different ways not necessarily all trying to vie for yeah her affection but um yeah, it's it's very it's very weird and disjointed, as you say. Um, I, I was trying to put um, 
the comparisons and the parallels between Mark and, and Carson Knowles as well and, and see how Marlene factors into that. What what I think, um, apart from the, the similarities of them both being kind of broken and having mental issues um, with... Uh, you know, coming terms with with themselves, I, I found them they were kind of well contrasted in the fact if you look at it, it essentially, as you mentioned, I think Carson Knowles wants to be loved, so he's looking for like a network. He's looking to to reconnect, you know, with with society and with people, and and I think that scene with Marlene maybe a bit of that you know of him saying look I'm not stalking you I'm, I'm you know he's trying to reconnect whereas I think Mark on the other hand is really pushing everyone away um, so yep. it, you get that nice kind of contrast between the two uh, and and unfortunately Carson Knowles does some naughty stuff which <laughs> which makes yeah. him a villain uh, at, yeah. but but hey look at the end of the day who who kills who at the end it's Moon Knight who kills Black Spectre so He's not yeah. exactly a hero, is he, in that sense? No. No, mm-hmm. he's not. And, uh, I mean, the Black Spectre, some of the people he kills, you could justify that, uh, you know, they were bad people too. I mean, like sure. the parole officer that was blackmailing him. Oh, yeah. It was, um, he takes the scissors to him. Uh, yeah, he does. Um kind of seen just in the panel before <laughs> you see the scissors on the desk going hmm that's kind of within yeah. arm's reach <laughs> yeah. um but and but he that. does other inexplicable things like he kills a guy with a sword um which you mm-hmm. know a little a little yeah. off and, and his other intents to he smothers simon maddox but that's all um with malicious intent to 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 undo mark specter moon knight he really wants to to hurt him which again exactly. you kind of you know, he wants to get revenge. I mean, and isn't Moon Knight a, a, an avatar of vengeance as well? So they're on the same page. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... I always... I think this was brought up. I didn't actually read Resurrection more in preparation for this. I read, like, mm-hmm. I was going to read it, but I realize it doesn't really factor into this story as much as 25 does. Mm-hmm. But I always felt like uh, Black Spectre should have been used as like an avatar of Set. Oh, how cool um, would that be? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, in fact, like if they brought back Black Spectre, that would be a perfect way to bring him back to where he's still Carson Knowles and not somebody using the guys. Yeah. Is uh, is if he was an avatar of Set, and yeah. that would really cement the rivalry because they really are um, Mark and Carson are two sides of the same coin in a sense, because they're both military. Um, They're both, uh, they uh, have some mental issues. Mm -hmm. Um, They both have, uh, you know, obviously costumes and they go around doing what they do. But I think it's really poignant that one of these characters is dressed in all white and the other one is dressed in all black. Um, yeah. It's it's it really shows you that yes, these two are similar in a lot of ways, but still one is objectively good and the other is objectively evil. Even though Carson Knowles did some good things. And Mark Spector has done some bad things. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. It, yeah. I mean, exactly like you say with the parole officer. I mean, that sort of stuff is kind of on the level of of Moon Knight. You know, the guy is bad. You, you know, the yeah. parole officer. So Carson Knowles just meted out some justice there. Um, you know, Moon yeah, Knight esque just justice. It's not. It's not unlike uh, you know what a Frank Castle would do. Or, uh, exactly. I was thinking exactly that Punisher, like mil- another military guy. Like, yeah. would he, if he bumped into Black Spectre, would he be just as much of a a friend of him as he would uh, Frank is with with Moon Knight? There's that level of respect, you know, that they have. Uh, you see in, in some of the past issues, they have fought, but you know, essentially, there's a level of respect. I wonder if Frank would give the same to Carson Knowles. Um, I would, I would think maybe, but the fact that, you know, Frank, 
Frank sees things the way that Frank wants to see things. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah know, exactly. The if 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 Black Spectre isn't killing, you know, mob bosses and supervillains, he's probably not going to be well looked upon by Frank. But yeah, you know, the parole officer was dirty and mm, you know, true. But you're not not a criminal. But you're right, though. You're not criminal per se. So maybe it's just right. too small, small fish for for Frank. And the other guy, the guy in the gave him the the sword. I mean, he wasn't a criminal at all. Um, yeah. um, Black Spectre did kill Killer Shrike, but I guess Frank would have said, "Yeah, good on you for the, for that." <laughs> yeah, probably probably for that one, he would have. Yeah. Um, even though, as far as we know, Killer Shrike hasn't really been active. Um, no. So, no. Uh, yeah, which is, um, I mean, it was good to see him in there. Uh, it was a bit of a shame that I guess he was he was just used in that sense um, to to be a yeah. reference to history. I mean, because Killer Strike has pretty juiced up powers, um, so you kind of wonder what's happened between then and now, and how come he didn't really put up a good fight in the end. Um, but you know, that's just a small quibble. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um... I know with Black Spectre, the thing I think, if I had to, if I had to deduce why I think that he is Moon Knight's ultimate villain, is because in both this arc and his original appearance, he defeats or breaks down Mark in like every way possible. He breaks mm. him down emotionally he ba- breaks him down physically he he on multiple occasions has uh overpowered moon knight mm. yeah, he does it in this one as well yeah um he's he's beaten uh moon knight politically he's beaten him uh, i'm not uh, mentally i mean mm-hmm. he's he he's literally brought in mark in this story so far down that he has no choice he feels like but to kill him yeah. So yes, he he does push him. I mean, like, I mean, Moon Knight pushes yeah, Black Spectre, but he does Black Spectre pushes Mark to that point, doesn't he? It's um, really there's no other way because he was getting his his ass whooped up on that rooftop as well. So, um, and, and we can't we can't just use the excuse that Moon Knight you know has bad knees because in the, the in the original story Black Spectre beat him as well. So mm, uh-huh. yeah. He's just a, a more yeah. well well accomplished fighter. I mean, period. He yeah. probably just outguns him and all all things. So it, it was actually it was a shocking thing where you just see Moon Knight. You can almost see it. I can almost see it play in a TV show or a movie. You just see him kind of go, "Oh God, well, what can I do?" And then he just he just pushes him off the off the edge. Um, out of it's really a really a desperate um, a desperate move uh, because he he was out of answers. He can't beat him. So just well. I'll just have to, yep. yeah, do the dirty. And it is a very... He pushed him in the back when the guy's back was turned. That's pretty bad. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. During his... his uh, I have my notes during his villain monologue, which mm-hmm. uh, is it's always the curtain call for the villain. So, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, that scene is beautiful in a lot of ways because, you know, we see it, it's kind of the duality of man here because we see black specter falling and he's afraid but then we see these flashes of carson knowles and he's looking he's looking at his son and he's happy so it's like there's like two people uh like i think carson kind of wanted to die a little bit Oh yeah, and, a, it was quite sad. Actually, quite touching that you know you yeah. see the, the the bright again. The art is really played nicely with the light colors there, just him reminiscing about his son. Yeah, that that would be interesting to bring that in a future story. Is maybe maybe Karsten Knowles was de- developing a little bit of DID himself. You know, mm, mm-hmm. wouldn't it be interesting if uh, Moon Knight had a villain that was suffering from the th- same thing he was? Oh yeah, and and have him resurrected like Mark was, but by by set instead. You know that'd be cool. Yes. Yeah. No. No. It, it is. Sorry. Hire me, Michael. Hire me. <laughs> yeah, this man has got ideas. I'm hiring, but yeah, yeah. Black Spectre, uh, brilliantly portrayed in here, and as you said, um, his character development just in this six issue run was was really good. On, on top of as you mentioned, the reference to issue twenty five of volume one. Um, 
uh, by far, like if you were to compare him to Bushman, who Bushman's more of a, a tour de force. I think there's, you know, he, he's just brutal and, and physical over Mark Spector. Uh, as you mentioned, Carson Knowles has a lot more uh, angles that he plays to Moon Knight, and and a lot, so a, a lot more for more formidable in that sense. For sure, Bushman is just he's like a force of nature. He, he is, just, yeah. He doesn't he doesn't really plan out things. He just He's like he's like a killer shark. He just yes, you know, um, yeah. And that's not a reference to his teeth. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he... It's like okay, go ahead. Oh no, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, but Bushman, he's he very he's a, definitely a physical threat to Mark. Whereas somebody like say uh, Morpheus would be more of a mental. Mm. Uh, battle for mark or uh stained glass scarlet oh for not sure. yeah. kind of kind of iffy if she's a villain or not you know uh, it's it's but, weird uh, she she kisses him and all i remember she kisses him and then stabs him <laughs> it's like yeah it's uh she's yeah, yeah. but yeah. then black specter he kind of just checks all the boxes he's yeah he does yeah no, I'm convinced as well. I think I think um, he, he's a very severely underused, and he's he's such a formidable adversary for, for Moon Knight. Um, speaking of which, though, as well, Russell, we do also have the appearance of the Profiler here. So, what are your thoughts on on uh, on how he was used? Obviously, I mean, not obviously, but he's in cahoots with Mark Spector now from issue thirteen. Mark uses him, um, and he uses him here to to kind of find cr- uh, crime or criminals. Yeah, uh, he's a he's an interesting character. Uh, like he's almost he's almost uh, to a reader. I think it's intentional that he's almost annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that like he just he knows everything about everyone, including the woman he's sleeping with. Yes, and yeah. <laughs> he, he's. I mean. <laughs> He he makes she makes the comment. I was like, "Well, you know, you liked it." And he was like, "Well, unfortunately, you're right." <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just he's such an. He, uh, there's not really a character with that. He's a bit of a weasel. I think he's like a. He's, he's kind of weaselly. Um, he's got you know he's not physically formidable or anything like that, but uh, he does he does um, know a lot with his mutants. We know he's a mutant um, profiling yeah. skills. Uh, I thought he was effectively used here as well. Um, I'm not sure entirely. Maybe I've forgotten as to why he's agreed to to, to assist Moon Knight in stuff. Um, I don't but, quite remember either, but um, yeah. But he's an interesting character. It's um, yeah for sure. I, I loved him in issue 13, where he kind of got the measure of Doctor Deptford as well. Oh. Speaking of him, I mean, yeah, basically because of the profile and the mm. fear of uh, Shield, he uh, he he offs himself. Uh, yeah, and, and again, very, very bleak tone. Like so, he he hangs himself, um, which obviously, yeah, yeah, suicide is is a very kind of dark subject matter as well. And and Deptford, especially mm. how he committed suicide, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um so again a nice little call back to issue 13 only only um one issue ago from this arc uh but at least we do tie up that because uh I wouldn't say it was a loose end but uh, the fact that he kind of was revealed to be quite a you know a, a scary little person himself with uh you know killing animals and stuff and um yeah. it was it was good to kind of get a little little bit of closure on him um though unfortunately for him <laughs> Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I don't know any other any other points here, Russell, that you'd like to raise before we may. Uh, I, I, we can talk about the the uh, the uh, uh, Tony Stark's involvement oh, in this. Of course, uh, uh, it's it's pretty minor overall, but mm-hmm. uh, it definitely here. Here's the thing that doesn't quite. Uh, this has got to be Marvel editorial kind of scratch in their head here. <laughs> um, we we have you know Tony Stark in full force enforcing this you know superhero registration act. He wants to know how Moon Knight uh, you know got this card 
and why he's, you know, <laughs> brutalizing people. Yeah. yeah. And but at the same time on the cover is a little uh is a little advertisement for a secret invasion where we know that oh, uh, Tony Stark is, isn't Tony Stark right now. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. Uh you know that that had to irritate all the writers that weren't directly involved with that during oh. that halt. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean, um, you know, but if anything, it was nice to have, uh, I guess it's nice to have a cameo for Iron Man, but this uh, this over- uh, overseeing kind of authority um, looming over, over Moon Knight. Because, yeah, one of the important things, I guess one of the matters here is that the whole registration act and and the way that Moon Knight is uh, is is handling himself, considering that he's a registered member. I mean, so that was a big issue, actually. Which again, Benson I think addressed really well by introducing Shield and Tony Stark here. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was good to see good to see um, Iron Man in there. Um, although he didn't have too much to do, that, that interaction with him and Mark Spector and, and Mark just convincing him basically that it's not him, he's being framed. Uh, I'm glad at least that Tony, uh, Tony listened. Uh, yeah, for sure. And that, that kind of reminds me, it harkens back to uh, when uh, Captain America visited uh, Mark oh, earlier yes. in the, in this run. Mm-hmm. And we finally, you know, is like, uh, we're, neither of us are trying to recruit you. We want both of you to stay away. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Again, just shows how much of a a, a black sheep he is, really. Um, even amongst his peers, so to speak. So, um, yeah. yeah. So really cool indeed. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, there was that parade. Uh. Again, that that kind of all. Uh. Was it? Were they? Was that the um the Avengers slash Shield? parade where black specter was on the rooftop was that another one they were yeah that was that was, was the same as okay. far as i know that was the same okay so it wasn't a protest of because i remember there was a um, there was a protest of moon knight uh, against moon knight and i i saw one uh one billboard that said goon knight i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but no, no you're right that... you're right that building is also a callback to mm. issue 25 because that is where uh, the finale of that story took place as well. They, they mentioned that that was the same plaza. Yes. The same uh, building where they, uh, where Carson was having his big uh, mayoral uh, party, uh, whatever. And, yeah. uh, it's a really cool. Once uh, it, yeah. Oh, I love this this callbacks and and you know the nods to the past and and not I mean there is a significance to it I mean I, I guess you could say it's almost coming you know full circle by having them return to that same spot so uh, I think it was a considered choice to have it not just the fact of oh yeah let's just let's just base it here because it was here in issue twenty five yeah not just fan service yeah exactly uh, so it had, um, it had a point yeah absolutely. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. Have we left out any other really important? Because uh, again, as you can tell, listeners, there's so much in this six issues. Uh, it's hard to. Yeah. It's a it's a beefy, the beefy story. It um, is certainly. I I'm just kind of glancing over my notes here. I, mm-hmm. The uh, the uh, villains that. Um, or I won't say villains, the, the henchmen that uh, Black Spectre, he would eventually take the nanite technology from. Um, oh, yes. I do like that they bring up Doctor Doom. Um, That's right. <laughs> because, like, like this, yes, Tony Stark's lingering in the background, but other than him, this is a very grounded, very, uh, it's all about, Moon Knight's cast a character, so when they just randomly bring up Victor Von Doom, it's just like, well, we got to still remember that you know this is the Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. And he he's brought up in kind of a joking way, like basically this guy is like, yeah, I I could I could get Doctor Doom involved, and basically <laughs> all of right. his friends are just like, you're full of shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, and, and it's not uncommon for, for Munot to be in his own corner. Um, very, uh, you know, a lot of other characters sometimes do that as well. Black Widow, a lot of her runs are very much separated although, from although, the... Sorry? Although, uh, I said, although all, uh, Mark, Mark Spector has fought Doctor Doom, so... He has a brilliant a brilliant matchup in issues 39-40, I think, from the yeah. Mark Spector Moon Knight run. Uh, we covered I, with, uh, yeah, it was really cool. I think Doctor Doom holds the uh, holds the uh, award for I've fought every Marvel villain there is to fight. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, oh for sure. He, he's, yeah, we all know Doctor Doom. He's he's the he's the creme de la creme. He is the Marvel villain. Uh, yeah. it, the movies it, haven't exactly re- uh, reflected that, unfortunately, yet. But no. Doctor Doom. He is. He's the face of, of Marvel villains, as you say. Uh, for yeah. me, at least. It's I mean, yeah. it's like him and Magneto, and that's like, yeah, you know. Even I guess you could, even you could throw, back. Sorry, you could throw. You could throw, uh, you know, Thanos in there now, just because Not he's true. so popular because of the movies. But, mm-hmm. but no, yeah. I, I'd uh, I'd back Victor over over Magneto Magneto any day. Oh. <laughs> He's such yeah. he's such a cool villain. Uh, I really do like like him. Um, right, well, Russell, unless there's anything else, we can give this a rating. Um, but yeah, any other final thoughts for this? Uh, I would just say uh, this. I feel like this story is really underrated, mm-hmm. and all Moon Knight fans should read this because it's just as good as all the top tier stories that we always hear about mm-hmm. um uh yeah i can't yeah. recommend this story enough yeah i would i would absolutely agree as well it's it's a hidden gem it's one that's not really spoken about as much as it should uh mike benson is is a really cool writer um and the art is great but um it really does take take the strengths of the houston run and and it just actually builds off that um and if you've not read any comics on black specter before uh, this is certainly one that defines him as one of the i guess the the more complicated characters or complicated villains for, for moon knight so yeah highly highly recommended yeah um i will one more thing about this arc is that sure. i always think i always think it's pivotal that you balance um good storytelling as well as enough action Mm -hmm. and a lot of book a lot of books you know you expect like the cover will be two a hero and a villain about to fight and then the book they don't really fight or they fight for like one panel Mm -hmm. there's like two full pages probably more of just black specter and moon knight fighting yeah and uh i i love that oh you get it. it And you get the physicality of it as well because they are essentially are like military guys. Um, so it's all you know. There's no bells and whistles. It's just you know their weapons and their elbows and their and their fists. Um, yeah. So really yep. cool. And not only that, you get Moon Knight as well, cracking um, cracking heads with just street crims as well. The YOs were pretty fun to uh, a little call to Clockwork Orange. I'm imagining <laughs> with the yes. the kind of get up. Um, but also either, or either that or they were big uh, Mad Hatter fans. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, but they were brutal as well. Jeez, they just kind of sprayed bullets in that in that kind of um, gang club bar thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, very very cool. Uh, yeah, highly recommended. Well, um, there was also a, also a cameo from Larry King. I might add. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I was trying to remember because uh, we were talking about art and Mark Tixera, and he does like it shows that he can actually draw very accurate um, people. Didn't he also do? There's a, is there like Bush in there as well? I think I thought it was Larry uh, King, but there was one. I think it was the New York uh, New York senator or something. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know who that was at that time, but uh, right. I mean, obviously Larry King was much more recognizable than that gentleman. But yeah, uh, yeah, and certainly yeah, Larry King I, I recognize as well. I mean, and and he's kind of semi well known here in Australia, so I, I picked up on that reference too. Yeah. Well, Russell, 
I guess, uh, and loonies, if you want to know, why don't we give this a moon rating? I'll let you go first, Russell. You probably can see my score there already on the prompt sheet. But um, what would you give God and Country, Moon Knight Volume 5, issues 14 to 19? I was going to give it a 9 uh, full moon, but after <laughs> we've discussed it, yes, I'm, I'm saying big fuck off moon. Yes, we got one. There you go. They don't come too often, but there you go. So the big fuck off moon there from Russell. Thanks to Connor Shu. That's a 10 out of 10 loonies. That's really good. Uh, and, and kind of similar to you, Russell, I was about to give this an 8.5. I'm going to bump it up again because because I just really enjoyed this and I think it really should be read by, by maybe new followers of Moon Knight that aren't familiar with him. I mean, sure, we've got the, the Warren Ellis, as we mentioned, Jeff Lemire, um, Doug Mensch, classic, but... Don't forget Mike Benson's run here. Even actually start from 13, you know, which is um, a Houston run, because that kind of leads into this. So 13 to 19, even 20. I love 20 as well, but <laughs> this arc is... Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it's, it, sorry? And hey, hey, 20 is even great because and it reprints his first appearance in there. So Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, well, see, so. that's it. So this arc is bookended by kind of like one shots, um, which is really cool. Um, so you can, you know, arguably read those on top of this as well, because um, there's a little bit of a mention in twenty as well. What happens to Mark after this this arc? So, uh, but uh, I'm going for a big nine. A big. I'm going to go for a full moon from the rating, the vanilla rating system. So uh, high marks here, high praise, loonies. Um, so we have, uh, what's that? Nine and a half average, nine and a half out of 10. It doesn't get any higher than that. Well, unless you go for 10. <laughs> uh, so no, uh, a big thank you there, Russell. Uh, it's been, it's so much fun to, to, to chat this arc, uh, with you. Um, I'm hoping you, you've enjoyed the chat as well as, as, as the reread. Uh, oh yes, I've I've enjoyed this whole experience. Uh, I I hope I can uh, come back for another episode at some point. Oh, absolutely! You just gotta um, just drop us a line. I'll, I'll be sure to tap you on the shoulder for sure. Um, we haven't finished yet here though, Russell. What we do have, we have nightlines. A couple of bits of feedback that I just wanted to shout out on uh, from some some loonies. So thank you so much, loonies, for for leaving your feedback. As always, I try to post up some discussion threads over our social platforms. Uh, let us know what you think. It's not too late as well. Just let us know what you think of this arc. Or have a reread, maybe after after listening to this, and, and tell us your thoughts. But um, how about I'll take the Facebook one, Russell. Do you want to take the Instagram ones? Uh, sure. Okay, cool. So uh, just a couple of bits of feedback from Facebook, the page. We've got The Power, the power of Chad. 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 A good friend of the show and a regular co-host. And Chad writes in, I really love this arc. The covers are... Oh, we forgot to mention the covers. The covers are super grisly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, the covers are brilliant. Um, I don't have that. Maybe... Sorry, Russell, maybe you can have a quick little look up who the cover artist is uh, while well, I give this a little bit of a read. Uh, so Chad says, The covers are super grisly. The exposition is light, but really move the story along, and the characterizations were on the mark. Ha ha ha, love the pun. Not only is this the return of a veteran villain, but it has Rawhead Conchu and Mark splitting, um, oh sorry, spitting on the Stark sanctioned hegemony. Uh, the supporting uh, cast shows up, gadgets are used, and the occultist background stains the glass through this arc. <laughs> as far as the arc goes, the only downside is the jacket to jacket art, and it's not even that bad. Eight and a half out of ten. So thank you so much, Chad. Yeah, um, I think we share very much the uh, your sentiments. Um, though, I mean, judging from our discussion, Russell, we, we absolutely love the art uh, within the jackets. Um, but a huge eight and a half. The cover artist is uh, Arthur Sudam. Okay, Arthur uh, Sudam. Uh, yeah, so, so what looks like painted, really yeah. horror-esque um, covers. And... Uh, Issue 17 is a straight-up recreation of uh, the cover for Issue 25. Ah, uh, um, yes. It's 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 great. And I also really love the cover of 19 because Black Spectre's actually on that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, brilliant covers. We forgot to mention it, but um, thank you so much for reminding us, Chad, as well. And they do deserve recognition because they are so. Oh, they do kind of, I guess, um, further the tone of what's inside. Although it's very different art from the inside. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, Russell. So we've got a couple from Instagram as well. All right, uh, Tossle Boy. Uh says this really cemented Black Spectre as Moon Knight's greatest villain. Morpheus is still my favorite, but Black Spectre is a greater villain than Bushman and the others, in my opinion, as he truly tests Mark in each altercation. His death was spectacular as well. Yeah, thank you so much, Tossle Boy. Um uh, yeah, I mean, I think Russell and I we both agree as well. Morpheus I love as well. Um uh, he he's such a oh, he he's another kettle of fish. Um, just very he's tragic as well. I guess I mean apart from Bushman, I guess you say most of the villains are quite tragic. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, and and I think from our discussion as well, Russell, I think Black Spectre, where we're kind of pitting him as maybe even better than Bushman. Um, so yeah, <laughs> true. Similar to Tossle Boys. Bushman, uh, not to not to get off topic, but Bushman. Uh, again, he's he's a pivotal to Moon Knight's origin, mm-hmm. but he really doesn't show up that much either. Uh, he doesn't like like he has a big thing, uh, a, a big um, part in issue one, I think, in the second half of the story where he comes back into the city and he starts, you know, causing yeah. havoc. But yeah, you're right. I mean, and and if anything, it's all pretty straight laced. What he does, it's like you know, mm-hmm. nothing too kind of um complicated or complex about it but uh yeah yeah he's still a good villain but yeah i i'd I'd tend to agree black specter i want to see more black specter yes uh marvel call me Uh, (laughs) (laughs) but uh and then we have a trash talk podcast says Mm -hmm. uh one of my favorite moon knight issues uh great art terrific villain yeah absolutely um yeah, I'm assuming all the issues. Um, one of my favorite, when mentioned favorite Moon Knight issues, I think the whole arc. Uh, yeah, for sure, a terrific villain. Uh, it seems to be there are a few Black Spectre fans out there, Russell, more than I I thought to begin with. Yeah, what 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 should we call those? If Moon Knight fans are loonies, what should? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. It should be oh, some... uh, in in issue twenty five, he called his henchmen his ghosts. So maybe oh. that's what, yeah. There we go. I think I think Russell's coined a term there for you know for the community as well because the ghosts. Uh, let us know if you're a ghost as well, Looney listeners. Uh, if you do prefer Black Spectre over any of the other villains, or if you do highly regard him. But yeah, I mean, I, th- I think I'm a convert here. I did not realize how. I mean, I haven't read this in ages, but I didn't realize how how cool it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a story that I always I come back to. I, I think this might be the Moon Knight story I've read the most, along with issue 25, just because I love uh, Black Spectre so much. Oh, that's a, I'm going to go back. I'm going to have to read 25. I didn't do my... I know that you, you posted up something. Was it in Discord, Russell? You are doing your Black Spectre homework, and you showed all, your, all the issues. Um, I'm going to have to go back and read 25. It's been a while. Yeah, I think I'll I'll go and uh, read Resurrection more now because mm. maybe I can make some more points. Uh, maybe I can <laughs> see some stuff that I missed because yes. it's been a long time since I read uh, Resurrection one. Yeah, so. well, and let let's get the conversation going. Let's uh, let's put up in our community on Discord, in Facebook, on Twitter, uh, just your thoughts on Black Spectre. So uh, this is a nice little segue. So Russell, where can Looney's contact you or you know if they want to chat black specter with you or hobgoblin where can they best find you well i i am a member of the facebook group uh the uh the into the night uh facebook group um my uh my twitter handle is at fussy russy 8960 um yeah, it's it's just my pri- or it's just my regular twitter account i don't have like a account just for my writing Mm -hmm. um i I am considering starting a patreon of my own we'll see how that goes Mm -hmm. um but uh, other than that that's about the only way to reach me 
Okay, excellent. And, and like um, I mentioned as well, uh, if you don't mind, Russell, we'll get that um, the sniper poem up. Uh, we'll post that up, uh, make that readily available for loonies to have a have a read. Uh, and yeah, and if they want to read more, uh, maybe they can contact you through the Twitter. Yes, yeah, I would love to hear you. Uh, I would love to hear everyone discuss uh, Black Spectre with me. Yeah, no, for sure, absolutely. Um, Russell's also on Discord as well, um, so get into that, Loonies, if you haven't as well. Discord's really cool. It just gives a, a bit more of a, a different forum to, to chat um, chat away and, and talk about different topics. Uh, but, of course, you can catch uh, Russell and all the other Loonies, everyone else uh, in the community on the Facebook group or the page. Uh, so a big thank you once again, Russell. Hopefully we'll get you on the show again. I mean, there's only a couple more for this uh, for this year. I'm going to wrap up just a bit before Christmas, but hopefully in the next year, uh, early next year, we can get you on. Oh, I'd be happy to be on. Awesome, awesome. Maybe we can, uh, maybe well, you know, we can maybe cover the other Black Spectre issues, um, but yeah, or, or maybe even the the Hobgoblin team, uh, not team ups, uh, throwdowns with Moon Knight. Oh yeah, I'd be down for that. Ah, oh, that'd be cool. Um, next phase, Loonies, is episode 177, and we have another Isla Ra Sessions. It's a big one. I love doing these things. Uh, and we'll have a special guest, Lilith Hellfire. She is a co-host of Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks. Uh, she'll be coming on during the new moon, and we'll talk all about her her Isla Ra books or her de- Desert Island books, as well as kind of getting to know Lilith a bit more as well. She's a she's an enigma wrapped up in a riddle. It's uh, she's a, she was a lot of fun to chat to. So uh, uh, check out that next week as well. Uh, also, again, a big thank you to the likes of Jack Russell Moran, who is a Patroni. You too can be a, P- a Patreon member if you check out patreon.com slash itk moon knight. Um, just check out the incentives there I've, I've tweaked a few things a couple of the goals um, I, I think have changed um, much to do around uh, potentially getting a new website uh, and actually getting some memberships or plans for for some other uh, platforms online for, for myself to record and make this show bigger and better than it can be uh, as mentioned as well a big sponsor uh, thank you to sponsors hello headphones if you use their the code itk moon Knight as a promo you'll get 10 percent off their online store get yourself some earphones or headphones and a big thank you to dreamland comics so if you use the code moon you can get 20 percent off as well so if you're missing these benson uh issues issues 14 to 19 why not have a check uh, at dreamland comics and get 20 percent off as well uh, also, we are an affiliate member to Entertainment Earth, so uh, once that Moon Knight wave comes, uh, be sure to, ch- to click the links uh, in our show notes, and any purchases will, will help prop up the show um, and will be very much appreciated. We're also a, a member of the Collective, so just a whole bunch of us in an informal podcast network. Uh, we just like to support each other. Incidentally, uh, if you go check out, I'm on one of the Collective members' uh, shows, Happiness in Darkness a superhero movie podcast i get to chat with dj nick about silver surfer oh sorry fantastic four the rise of the silver surfer that sequel uh that came out 2007 so around around the same time that this uh this run was on um that was a lot of fun so uh other collective groups such as to know her is to fear her a spider woman podcast shameless plug from me uh, as also, uh, as well, Resurrections, Thanos and Adam Warlock podcast. There's a whole heap of them. Go check them out. They're all in the show notes too as well. Uh, they're highly recommended. Finally, you can find us or drop us a line. Let us know about Black Spectre. Let us know about your thoughts on this run, God in Country, um, via email at itkmoonight at gmail.com or on Facebook in our page or group, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Discord, Get Vocal. We've got a website, and we're also on Podchaser as well. Uh, incidentally, if you want to leave a review, please do so on Podchaser or on Apple Podcasts. That would really help us expand and uh, reach other loonies out there. So uh, one final time, a big thank you again, Russell. Uh, sorry you had to sit through uh, the the usual outro stuff. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, looking forward to having you back on again. Uh, and as always, loony listeners, may Conchu watch over the denizens of the night. Catch you later. Moon Knight 
and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.